Hey guys, Swift here with some more Chicago Bears coverage. The Bears made some roster moves yesterday after the weekend minicamps. Starting early, Ryan Poles cut Ladarius Mack, running back Master Teague, wide receiver Landon Lenore, wide receiver Savon Scarver, linebacker Jalen Alexander, and safety Amari Carty. All cut. He then added six more players that I will be covering in just a moment. I loved Master Teague's RAS score and athletic ability, but he didn't impress the Bears enough to stick around. He wasn't a very creative runner, and he had tight hips. Savon Scarver made a big play on the first day of minicamp, but is undersized and was a long shot to stick around. The other notable one was Khalil's brother, Ladarius Mack. His potential always intrigued me, but I think it was more of a nod to Khalil that we kept him on the roster. I hope he gets another shot elsewhere, though. Now let's go ahead and get into the six players that we brought in yesterday, and I'll talk a little bit about how each one fits the team. First up is linebacker Christian Albright. He was a solid linebacker at Ball State. His career stats include over 250 plus tackles, 33 tackles for loss, 9 forced fumbles, 2 interceptions, and a touchdown. He's 6'2", 240 pounds, and ran a 47540. He's an aggressive and physical linebacker who loves to lay the boom. He's a very good tackler who can also rush the passer. His coverage skills are very limited, and he needs to add a bit more strength and bulk at the next level. If he does that, he can find success. He is a big hitter that should be a Sam linebacker on our defense. Considering Sam is one of the weakest positions on our roster, and the big ability that Albright has, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that he actually competes with Matthew Adams and a few other players like Jack Sanborn for the starting Sam linebacker spot. Next up is safety John Alexander, a 6'3", 205-pound kid that you just want to root for. He started out as a JUCO player, but he showed out and won a conference championship. He then transferred to Kansas State, where he played in 12 games, had one sack, a blocked punt, and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. The 2020 season didn't go as well as Alexander tested positive for COVID and missed the entire season. He transferred to UNC Charlotte for his final year, and he started nine games, had two picks, including one for a touchdown, 57 tackles, two for loss, and two more forced fumbles. We know Flus preaches about taking the ball away, and you can see that ability in a lot of the young kids they added to the roster. Alexander doesn't have everything that Poles and Flus looks for in a player, as shown by his 3.88 RAS score. He's probably not a long-term safety prospect, but he could be a backup and solid special teams player. Next, we have TCU long snapper Antonio Ortiz. Not going to talk much about this one. He's a long snapper. I will say since Pat Manley retired, our long snapping hasn't been as good. Maybe this guy can come in and get the job done. He started 44 straight games and was actually a Patrick Manley Awards semifinalist last season. He was considered one of the best long snappers in the nation, and he has a twin brother who is the long snapper at Florida. Not much else to say on this one, guys. Next up, we have defensive end Carson Taylor from Northern Arizona. He's a 6'4", 236-pound kid who played the Sam linebacker in the 4-3 defense, and he played the defensive end in a 3-4. He has good speed and ran a 4-6-5-40. He made plenty of plays in the backfield. He had 20-plus career sacks, go with more than 40 tackles for loss. Bears had him listed at defensive end, so I assume that's where they're going to play him. I could see him get some time at Sam linebacker as well, where we have a bit less depth. Either way, he's a guy who makes plenty of noise in the backfield and could make an impact as a situational pass rusher as well. Loose loves to keep players fresh on the defensive line. Watch out for this guy. It'll be interesting in camp to see if he plays a defensive end or linebacker. He's a guy I'll definitely be watching out for. Now we get to safety, A.J. Thomas from Western Michigan. Thomas rotated between safety and linebacker at Western Mich. He was 6'2", 220 pounds, 
and has the size and speed combination to be a safety in the NFL. He's a solid tackler who is at his best when he's in the box. He's great at attacking, but he struggles in man coverage or deep zone looks. He could come in and play strong safety as a backup and special teamer, or he could even get some looks at linebacker as well if he were to bulk up just a bit. I like his size and 4-5 speed combination, and I think he could be a guy who sticks around initially due to his work on special teams. Coaches love having players to cover kickoffs who are big, strong, fast, and reliable tacklers. And that is what A.J. Thomas is. I don't know if Thomas has the skills to be much more than a solid backup at safety, but he could make an impact on special teams early on. Lastly, we get to running back DeMontre Tuggle from Ohio. He's a fifth-year senior who led his team in rushing and caused some damage as a pass catcher. He had 960 total yards to go along with nine touchdowns on the season. He also scored 12 touchdowns as a junior and has a nose for the end zone. He's a bit undersized at 5 foot 8, 206 pounds. He ran a 45940 and has pretty good speed. He replaces Master Teague on the roster who got cut. Tuggle shares some similarities with former Bear Tariq Cohen. He's another guy who can return kicks. And runs with balance and power. He's more of a downhill runner though and he doesn't have the elusiveness that Cohen had to his game. He has good hands and makes some impressive catches out of the backfield. He has nice speed and burst. He should compete with Travis Ebner, the running back that we drafted that I will be doing a full breakdown on soon. He can help in the kick return game and as a third down runner. Extra points. Tuggle is a downhill or north-south runner meaning he runs better in a straight line and doesn't have the flexibility in his hips to change directions or make sharp cuts. This isn't always a bad thing, but probably limits him from being a three down back in the NFL. Those are my thoughts on the six players we added from this weekend's mini camps. I'll also break down what we learned from the mini camps this weekend. Look out for that video tomorrow. Also, if you guys are new to the channel or just haven't seen them yet, I have three full scouting report videos on cornerback Kyler Gordon, safety Jaquan Brisker, and wide receiver Valus Jones Jr. Braxton Jones is up next. Look out for that this weekend. Be sure to watch the Gordon video if you haven't yet. It's one of my best videos out. As always, I appreciate everyone who watched. Please hit that like button. Until next time, bear down.